I think my screen is visible to all, right? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So you'll get this uh, Google Collab window. And uh, you see here, uh, you're getting the file name that is untitled file that IPYN by. Normally, the Python extension is .py. But uh, when you're using Google Collab, you'll get an extension IPYNB. This is uh, a Python notebook. And you can just uh, change the name as per your own, like uh, FDP. Demo, right? So this is the file name I have given to my uh, <clears throat> this uh, Python notebook. And here you can see there is connect. It's not connected yet to the uh, uh, that, uh, this Google uh, Cloud environment. So let me connect it. Now it is allocating the resource, connecting. After that, it will initialize. And then I'll get the resource. Now it's connected and I got the resource like RAM, disk. And if you want to connect, uh, you need GPU also. You can just, you see, when you're putting it here, you'll get that Python 3 Google Compute Engine back. Uh, backend and RAM 0.89 GB, 12.68 uh, GB. Disk is this much, but GPU is not allocated to me. So if you want GPU, you can just allocate GPU also. But right now we don't need GPU, so I'm not uh, I'm not bothered. Okay. So this is the Google Collab environment onto which we are going to run uh, our Python code. <clears throat> you see. Uh, the Python was developed somewhere in 1991, and Java came into picture in somewhere 1995. It is too much resource. Uh, this Python code is going to uh, take too much resource. That's why it is not got popularity uh, before the Java. It got popularity after 2007 because uh, after 2007, the resources are easily available. Like you can get memory, RAM, very easily. But early uh, in 30 years back, you can't uh, think of. Uh, about the uh, too much size of RAM and uh, hard disk to your uh, system. So that's why it's getting late. Uh, it got late popularity. Okay. So this is our, the uh, where you can write the code for the Python. And if you, if you want to just uh, give some comment, there is text. You can write some, you see here, there is two options are coming. That is code and text. So if you want to compute your code, you can write in the code uh, window, or if you want to put some message or you want to uh, just uh, write some comment, you can write in the text. We'll see, fine. Now, the beauty of this Python is you can run the one-liner uh, command. There is no need to go with the structured programming like in C or uh, uh, in Java that you'll have to write a class and then inside the class, you'll have to make main and then you'll have to write this uh, command to run, no, not at all required. For example, if I want to print simple, welcome to FDP. So I need to simply write a function print and I can pass the parameter what I want to uh, display. Like I'm trying to display welcome to FDP. Welcome to FDP, fine. And just run this command, you'll get the output. No need to write uh, the structured programming like in C, you're, you're supposed to write has include uh, studio.h or uh, uh, then void main, opening curly brasses, then you are supposed to write uh, uh, the printf statement, then the parameter, then the closing brasses, and finally you are supposed to compile and then link and then execute. No, not required. So this is the beauty of Python, this one liner command and your work is done, right? Now, again, if you want to declare a variable, if you want to store some value, you're not, you not at all uh, bothered about what type of variable uh, you need to declare. Like in C, you need to, uh, before declaring a variable, you need to uh, think about the type of variable, like whether it is integer or float or uh, long or char or whatsoever, right? So here, if you are declaring a variable and if you are trying to initialize it, it with value 10, so by default, uh, we, it, is going to, uh, it is going to assume that you are trying to declare a variable of a type integer. 
Now, if you are trying to declare a variable and you are trying to initialize it with 12.5, so Python will automatically uh, assume that you are trying to declare a variable of the type b and the type is float, not integer. Now, if you are trying to declare a variable of the type c and if you are trying to initialize it valid, with valid true, so it by default it will in, uh, understand that you are trying to declare a variable of the type boolean, right? So now. I'm trying to print the value of A and B. Let's run the code, your work is done. Now you see, if I want to know the type of A and B, if I want to know the type of A and the type of B, You see, the type of B is float, but it has not printed the type of A because uh, I'm going to give the explanation. If you want to know to print both, so you need to write here print. And again, you're supposed to write here print. You see? The type of A is class integer and type of B is class float. Fine. So if you are not giving any print statement, if you are not giving any print statement, like 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 like, uh, let me comment this all. Let me comment this all statements. Nothing to worry. I'll share this notebook with you. And now I'm trying to print A and B. Or this time, what I'm doing, I'm trying, I'm printing B first and A later. Now you see, only the value of A is printed. So if you're not giving any print statement whatsoever, the last statement is going to print. That's why when I have not given print type of A and print type of B, only type of B uh, was printed. I think it's clear. Is it? I told you that uh, uh, it will be interacting session that uh, you should uh, just interact to me. I'm not getting getting any response. Is it okay? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I'm not getting any response. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like, now let me let me discuss uh, let me discuss about the tokens in Python. Right. Tokens in Python. Okay. So there is there are four tokens uh, in Python. First, we are calling it as literals. Second is operators. Third is identifiers. Fourth is keywords. or sometimes we are calling it as reserve words. Okay. So this is not in the case of Python. In any programming language, this topic is, uh, you'll have to learn this topic. That is, what are the tokens available in any, uh, the programming language, which you're trying to uh, read on, uh, which you're trying to learn, right? So whatever, whatever statement you're writing in for any programming language, it consists, it, it, it is called like, like, like in C, it's not in Python. If you're writing in uh, C equals A plus B, something like that, then the semicolon, right? So this, the whole statement consists of tokens. Whole statement consists of token. Like here, the integer is keyboard. This C is identifier. This equals is, uh, you see, our operator. 
operator this a is again identifier this b is identifier this plus is operator fine so in any programming language we need to understand the tokens first so now we are trying to understand the tokens wait a minute the tokens used in python so whatever statement we are writing in python it's a type of token like either it can be literal or it can be operator or it can be identifier or uh, it's a keyword fine so literal meaning when i am writing a equals 20 or i am writing b equals 12.5 or i am writing c equals true or i am writing or i am writing name equals amit right fine so this all like 20 12.5 true amit this all are the literals this is the integer literal floating point literal uh, this is a uh, boolean literal the string literal so the value which we are trying to assign to some of the identifier this this is a type of literal it can be constant it can be yeah the, uh, mostly like this amit it's a constant right so it's this all are we are calling it as literal and where this a b c these are these all are the identifier this name is identifier this equals is uh, operator i think it's clear i guess it's clear it's okay okay like if i am writing print welcome to fbp at jan university print simple pen when i am going to execute this two line this is my string literal which i passed as a parameter to print and this is my integer literal which i pass as a parameter to print right now i can pass any type of literal like i can write print 1.0 or i can print 6.25 see here i am using the floating point literals okay whether i can go with uh, a string literal also like i am writing name equals beta and full name equals beta chinha and i can write like i i, I can write like this print this instructor to this course is calling print we can call him as me now you see this is the value there is string literal there is two value i just stored that is the name and full name and i pass this value as a parameter to this print statement one is the uh, uh, the statement which i am trying to get it like the structure to this course full name deepak sena we can call him as deepak right so what i told you that uh, whatever the statement you are writing in any of the programming language i am not discussing only on the python so it's a collection of tokens only and you can categorize token in four broad categories that is literals operators identifier keywords or reservoirs literal yeah i told you it can be of any type like uh, integer float uh, string any type 
operators will discuss identifier identifier again we are going to discuss identifier is a name which has been given by the programmer right so it uh, identifier means all variables or constant which you are declaring a function name which you are declaring if you are discussing in terms of c or java or any other programming language like the uh, class name structure name which whatever name a programmer is going to uh, define or declare then we are calling it as identifier means you are going to identify something with some name that's why it is called as identifiers and keywords are reserved keywords and reserved words are the uh, uh, the words which has been given by the uh, compiler it is you are not going to use anywhere as per your uh, need uh, you can use as an as a part of syntax only fine okay okay so let me discuss something about uh, you see yeah identifier i discuss already now what are the rules in python what are the rules in python to declare identifier rules for naming identity files the first rule to identify any uh, uh, to give a name to any identifier is an identifier an identifier must start must start with a letter or underscore character this is the first naming rule and convention the identifier can contain alpha numeric characters just a minute characters or underscore this only you see i have written this word only in caps so this will have to follow otherwise you'll get an error so there is two naming uh, two rules for naming naming identifier identifier i discussed you i told you identifier means when you are trying to declare a constant variable function class uh, yeah so this when you are trying to declare you have to give name that we are calling it as identifier okay so let us see uh, i am trying to declare a identifier name is student so i can give a student one right and i am giving literal literal is a value assigned to identifier it can be anything like it can be character it can be boolean it can be anything so i am giving the name to this literal is uh, let me write a name amit fine now i can give a student underscore 01 this is also okay no problem we discuss we can give name under uh, we can use underscore and here i am gi i am giving name jahid now i can start the name from underscore also like and i am writing a name called johns and again and here i am trying to write fine now see when i am trying to just execute this uh, snippet the code you'll see you'll get an error 
and you'll get an error at 01 students is equal to zero because as per the naming convention rule an identifier must start with a letter or underscore you can't start uh, any identifier any variable name with number it can be alpha numeric alpha numeric means it must start with alphabet not with number it's not numeral alpha it's alpha numeric i guess it's okay okay and when you are trying to make this line as comment you will not get any error for sure you will not get any error because every others you see yeah there is no problem fine now let me discuss something about the operators operators so not into uh, in python to any programming language there are uh, we are using operators it can be arith arithmetic operator it can be logical operator it can be comparison operator it can be assignment operator in the same way okay so when i am writing a equals b plus c it's an expression so expression is basically combination of operator and operator let me write it here it will be more better so when i am saying expression Mean it is combination of operators and operands. So whenever you need to create any expression, whether it is mathematical expression or uh, any other of expression, so you need operators and operands, right? So. so let me start with the arithmetic operator fine and now when i am say when i am declaring a, a a variable with a value 5 like a is equal to 5 b equals uh, b equals let us say 8 and when i am writing print a plus b this is the addition mathematical operator a minus b see we declared a and b with some value this is the integer literal assigned to identifier a this is the integer literal 8 assigned to identifier b this is uh, assignment operator that is equal equal operator not equality assignment operator and this is the mathematical operator arithmetic operator like plus minus and divide fine and you'll get the answer so likewise in any other programming language you can is uh, you can use all the mathematical operator here but there is some different operator you can uh, that is available in python like uh, there is one operator let me use first then we'll discuss a double divide b and a double multi multiplication b Uh, let me write. Okay. Okay. So you see. Let me give some other value. Otherwise. Uh, Let it uh, be five, and let it be two. Yeah. Okay. Now, you see, when you are saying double divide b, so 
five double divide b All right five divided two so it is going to give you it is going to give you the integer part of the division integer part of the division this is not mod mod is something different when i am writing a mod b so 5 mod 5 mod 2 becomes 3 right 5 mod 2 becomes 3 but when i am saying uh, a double divide b so it is going to just return me the integer part of the division that is the uh, let us let, let us try to assume 5 divided 2 it will be 2.5 right 2.5 so it is go, uh, going to give the answer before before point like 2.5 so it, it will return only 2 that is the integer part of the division and when i am writing double multiplication b so it is par exponents a to the b like 5 to the 2 so 5 uh, multiplied 5 that is 25 so these are the two different operators used in python which uh, we are not using uh, in c and even to java so i thought to uh, just uh, say it here okay okay so comparison operator that is uh, greater than equal to less than equal to yeah that is uh, logical equal to greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to not equal to we are going to use in the same way as we are using in the other programming language so no need to discuss uh, it here okay now let me discuss the data types in python i think till now i discussed few points that how to uh, start the python coding in google collab and then i discuss the tokens after tokens i discuss the uh, naming convention that uh, how we can name or identify in python and then i i i just discuss the type of operators used in python and i discuss only the few point which is uh, required to discuss here the rest are the same as the other program in the other program now let me discuss the data types data types in python the good news is for numbers we use only int there is data type int float and complex very few as compared to your c and uh, java there is there is text data type and it is string only there is boolean that is true and false then there is binary types which we'll see we are not going to see binary today and the most important which is uh, we are going to discuss uh, today that is collection data type in the collection data type we are going to discuss about the list apples set and dictionary so i guess uh, integer float string true false binary i told you we are not going to discuss today so the means uh, the point which we are going to cover today is this that is collection data type list apple set and dictionary so let me start from the list it's a collection data type when i am saying collection 
so it's going to hold more than one value at a time like in the case of array and c and uh, java or to any other programming language but actually let me tell you this is not array this is not array fine so uh, means uh, nothing to con confuse with array uh, into this all collection data type and this is mutable data type what is the meaning of mutable i am going to discuss so the characteristics is it's mutable and the second one is it's ordered order data type or you can say order is maintained order is maintained. so basically it's collection data type means we are going to collect some value to one variable to one identifier then we are calling it as means uh, there is many not only list but list is one of the uh, collection data type which is mutable and the order is maintained while storing some value fine so how to create how to create list so the way to create list is first of all you'll have to give identifier name list identifier name so i am writing here my team this is the name of the identifier and then i'll have to start this uh, 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 to just uh, if you want to give more than one value then i'll have to start a hard bracket and then i can give many values like i'm giving the three four names rohit like uh, virat rishabh and rahul so basically what i did i created a collection of four names i just trying to collect four names rohit virat vishal and rahul to one variable that is my name it is not at all possible uh, to hold more than one name to one variable we need some collection data type and i am using list collection data type to hold this all four names to one variable it is my name and now if i want to see it so i can print my team see you'll get all names as a list now if i want to know what is the type type of this my team so here it is it's a list now why i'm saying this is mutable why i'm saying this is mutable because you can append to this list now uh, uh, now i came to know that uh, i i just forget one name so i can append i can append something to this list like i can add i can add my team dot there's a method called append and i can just write one name like uh moment next and after that i want to print again the my team you see this is appended now if i want to delete something i thought oh i but by mistake i added the name sir so no problem i can delete item with a method pop and then this is pop and then i can print also again i am going to print my team you see this is this item first we added and then we deleted that's why we are calling it as mutable type of data collection means you can add delete at any point of time there is no problem at all but this is ordered also this is ordered also so like 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 uh, the ordered collection 
this all items we can access through index like this rohit is at index 0 virat is at index 1 this is at index 2 and this is at index 3 so when you are trying to this is bounded one this there is a boundary so when you are trying to print let us say i am trying to print uh, my team index 2 so index 2 meaning index 2 meaning 0 1 2 like uh, it should print it should print 0 1 2 reserve let me see yeah actually it's printing reserve but when you are trying to this is 0 1 2 3 if you are trying to print 4 so you will get an error you see list index out of range in java you'll get the array index out of bonds in c also you'll get the same type of error so this is indexed indexed uh, this is ordered collection fine i think i am clear till this point is it any point you want to discuss or you want to ask are we good audience are we good i am not uh, i am not getting any yes, response okay. Okay. okay now this can be this is uh, one dimension this can be uh, of more than one dimension also let me let me create some multi dimension list so this is i am writing here sandeep his roll number is 1065 and he belongs to section a fine and then i am creating another ankur his roll number is 1100 and he belongs to let uh, he belongs to section b so when i am trying to print it so i told you if there is only one statement you can write directly no need to write print yeah here we go so this is a double dimension fine you can you can print like you can print like this also like print the index prints Zero through and print the students first row. Run it. Yeah. Fine. okay so let me move to the next topic that is chapter it is immutable again it's a collection it's a collection so when you're trying to create tuple like again i am trying to create team like uh, team 1 and again i'm trying to give the same same type of name like rohit virat and yourself okay but this time when you're trying to create tuple it should not be start with the hard bracket rather you'll have to start with the parameters and the same type of parameter like uh, rohit virat and Listen. You can print the data with a print statement in one. We get it. Here we go. Now, as I told you that uh, this is immutable. You can't add or you you can't delete. Once created, the addition is not possible. Like if I want to add something, team one dot append. to pop something 
like uh, uh, I want to uh, append something like uh, Arjit. You see, you will get an error. It's saying that table object has no attribute append. You can't add or you can't delete. Fine. You can't append and you can't delete. Yes. Okay. So this uh, tuple is immut uh, immutable. Now let us let me discuss about the set. It's immutable data collection. And to create set, like in the uh, set theory, when you're trying to create a set, you'll have to start, miss, you, normally the uh, uh, symbol which we are using is the curly brasses, opening and closing curly brasses. Same we can use here. And you can give the elements, like here I'm writing apples, bananas, oranges i'm creating the another set s2 bits pineapple and uh, apples and the good thing is you can uh, just uh, uh, with this all set, you can excise all the uh, operations on the uh, that you have already uh, discussed or learned during the set theory, like union, intersection, whatsoever. For example, if I want to get a set S3, which is union of S1 and S2, so I can do like this S1 dot union S2, and I can print. S3. We have created S3. Right? You see, this is the union. So while union, whether you see apples, it is not appearing two times. It's appearing only one time. Right? So this is a perfect union operation. Now we can just create some. Yeah. But uh, When it is a case of list, when this is the case of list, let me let me let me do something with the list. I'm trying to just copy this all elements of this set here, and uh, again I'm creating another list L2. And what I'm doing, I'm just copying this all element of set two here, and then I'm trying to add this. Yeah. So I'm trying to add like L3 equals L1 plus L2. And I'm trying to print L3. Now you see the difference between set operation and the list operation. You see. Can you see one thing? That while doing union, it's a perfect union. Apple is not repeating two times. While uh, adding list, you see, it's simply, it is simply adding the things, nothing more than that. So if Apple is appearing, uh, this Apple is here also, here also, so it's appearing two times. Right? So this is a difference between the union operation in the set and the addition operation in the list. Let me do some inter uh, intersection. Like if I'm trying to do S1 intersect is two. I think in between S1 and S2, only Apple is common, if I'm not wrong. Yes, Apple's is common. So I'll get only one element that is Apple's. Right? 
Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. But I am not getting too much responses, right? Maybe it's a very primitive discussion, right? But as I told you that uh, this course is all about, this, this FDP is all about the uh, AIML. And uh, in the beginning only I told you that uh, we'll start from the scratch, fine? So that there should not be any confusion. And if somebody is trying to come into this field ML, uh, it should be beneficial to them, okay. So the next thing that is the fourth one, that is dictionary. It's again a mutable. Okay. So when I'm when I'm trying to create dictionary, when I'm trying to create dictionary, normally we are calling it as it's a key value pair. Dictionary means when I'm saying dictionary, the attribute it, it's key. Pair extra. Now you see, whenever we are finding some difficulty in, like, like take an example, the very practical example, like you are uh, just reading a newspaper or some some literature, and you you just encountered with a uh, word which you don't know what is the meaning of that word. So that is that is not known word is key to you, and then what you are doing, you are just referring a dictionary to find its value, its, its meaning. So with this key, you are searching dictionary and finally you are reaching to the value of that key. So likewise, this dictionary is a combination of, it's a combination of key and value. So how to create a dictionary? Like you'll have to just declare an identifier for the dictionary. Likewise, you'll have to assign, like you'll have to use uh, assignment operator. And then like set, you'll have to use this curly braces. And then you'll have to, write the key name of the key here key and after the key you'll have to use colon and then you can give the value so for that i'm giving the value for the keys only right and then again i can give the name of the key that roll number roll number fine again i can give the value to this roll number like uh, 1065 and then Either grade or section, let me write grade. Grade. And I can give the value to this grade. I can give this value to grade, and I'm giving the grade is A. Okay. Now I can print the dictionary D1. You see? You'll get this key value pair. Or just you want to print the value from a key, not, not to the whole uh, dictionary. So in that case, what I can do, I can write print dictionary D1 and the key that I want to know is, let me see, what is the key, key is name, okay. So I can, I can, I want to know the only value of key name. Yeah, this and this. Or you can print any key, right? Uh, I want to know the value of roll number. This is the key, you'll get the value. I want to know the value of the key, great. You'll get the value, right? So this is combination of key and value, right? Okay, let me create another dictionary. So here I'm creating a dictionary cars. And uh, it is Volvo. Let us take, uh, this is NHP, there is some unit. Toyota, this is engine power like 20 and uh, the value is 
30. So there is three keys and three values. There's a key value pair. Fine. Now, now I want to know the value for the Toyota. Value for the key Toyota. It should come 20. Yeah, it's coming 20. Right? Now, we can know how many keys and how many values are there in the dictionary with a function keys and values. So you can do like this, print uh, the name of the dictionary, name of the dictionary that is cars dot keys. It will, it is going to give you the number of keys or dictionary name cars dot values is going to give you all values. So there is two method to this, uh, to know the keys and values. You see car dot keys. So there is Volvo, Toyota and Honda. Oh, uh, I did a mistake here. It's Volvo, not Volvo. Right. And there is three values, 10, 20 and 30. Right? Is it okay? Any question till this point? No, sir. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Is any? Uh, there is yes, sir, there is one question. Uh, whose question is this? Uh, Uh, I'm not able to see question. Okay, so uh, I'm not able to see one uh, the question. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll discuss. I'll discuss. Uh, uh, there is uh, Miss at eleven again. Again, there is season. So I'll take it and I'll discuss once again. No issues. No issues. Okay. So till now, what we did, let me summarize it and then I, I can start the new topic. So I have started uh, this Python coding uh, with, a, with a thought in mind that this is going to be the introduction for uh, you all. And uh, uh, I told you in the beginning, I'm going to start from the scratch so that you can practice. And I'm going to share this notebook also, no worries. Fine. So I'm going to say this notebook also. And uh, then I started uh, and I told you whatever you're writing, whatever writing in any of the programming language is a type of token of this all four. Like it can be literal operators, identifier, keyboards or reserve words. So literal is basically the value which is assigned to uh, any operator or it can pass to some of the parameter to function. So literal can be like your string literal, character literal, your uh, integer literal, floating point literal, boolean literal, whatsoever. Operators, basically, uh, it's required, like uh, I told you, the expression is combination of operator and operand. Yeah. So we discussed some some uh, some operator which is used in uh, Python, the two operator that is integer division and uh, the part that is exponential, right? So then we dis uh, then the good news is that you are not at all uh, think about the type of variable you should uh, declare and initialize. No, not required. Depending upon the value, the Python is going to assume what type of variable it is, whether it is a string or float or a boolean or a string, whatsoever. Yeah, this we discussed. Then uh, I discuss something about the literal, and then uh, I discuss you the rules for the naming identifier that uh, it should start with alphanumeric. It can't, you can't start it with the number. It, it, it can start either with the character or underscore. Further, you can use number, no issues. Yeah, this we discussed. And operators, arithmetic operators, logical operator, comparison operator, assignment operator. And the difference means like, the new thing I discuss here, like there is uh, integer division and exponents. Like when you are dividing 5 divided 2, it will be 2.5. So it's going to give you the 
integer integral part that is two and then the uh, yeah par double multiplication comparison operators are there yeah uh, data types in python for number there is integer float complex yeah integer and float uh, the main thing is you are not supposed to remember that uh, like uh, before declaration you should not write the type of variable you are trying to uh, declare so there is te text uh, data type also boolean this value true and false binary type i told you exclusively today we are not going to discuss this binary type yeah but for sure we are going to see in the um, filing part or uh, to the data frame we'll discuss it collection data type that's the most important part of this python uh, you see data type that is list tuple set and dictionary uh, not, nothing to confuse with this uh, array this is not array let me clear this is not array this is uh, order is maintained in the list it's mutable but nothing to confu confuse with the array this is not array why it is not array let me give you a hint like you see when I, whenever i am saying array array is there is four characteristics to array in c or into java like when we declare array we declare more than one variable with the same name same data type same data length and in continuous memory location fine so this is the all four characteristics of array but when you see here to the my list yeah you can it is not a homogeneous collection you can create different type different type of values here different type of values here you see different type of values here so when i'm trying to print it you'll get print there is no problem you see this all four rohit virat rishabh rahul this is the string where the stain is integer this true is boolean let me write some let me write some 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 integer also oh, sorry some floating point number also you see you'll get it so that's why i'm telling you nothing there is no point to confuse this list with the array array is homogeneous collection whereas this all data collection in in, in python whether it is list or tuple or set or dictionary it's not a homogeneous collection it a heterogeneous collection that's why you can't do the if you are trying to do something with the uh, array some sparse matrix or some 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 sort of different matrix you can't use list uh, you can't use data collection fine so i guess i am clear if not kindly let me know this point is okay why it is not array is this point is okay yes sir yes sir yeah. yeah so this is not array at all fine how to implement array we'll see today only fine today only we are going to see how to implement array in uh, in, in, in python fine and then i discuss your list that is mutable data structure why it is called mutable that you can edit at any point of time you can add you can delete you can yeah acha one more point uh, which I, i i i thought i forget whenever you are saying pop it is going to delete from the last but when you are trying to delete uh, in between then you will have to give the index it is ordered collection let us try to assume that you are trying to uh, pop this reserve so you'll have to give 0 1 2 yeah so when you are going to write here pop 2 so at that time it is going to delete this reserve and if you are not giving any parameter means it is going to uh, just delete from the last am i clear am i clear yes yes okay 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 and then we seen when we seen what uh, yes then we seen tuple that is the immutable data uh, collection you can't add or delete anything uh from the tuple once created then you can use it you can do some processing but you can't mutate it set we seen that you can use all the set operations like union uh intersection and all okay and then dictionary that is the very important for the data uh, data frame you see this dictionary is very much important when you are trying to go to the data frame part because uh, uh, somehow you are going to use this dictionary to create data frame uh, when you are going for the ml part like when you are trying to uh, download some data you are trying to create some data frame for uh, ml model so at that time this dictionary is going to be one of the useful tool for you so if there is any uh, point of confusion ask me there is no issues right so dictionary i told you it's a uh, 
it it is going to give you a data collection uh, it, it, it is a pair of key and value in a pair of key and value right so i i discussed you uh, the meaning of key and value there is key and there is value to it i discussed you that when you are trying to see refer something from the dictionary then uh, there is a key to which you want to find the value to that dictionary fine so it is a combination of key and value right so this is a key value pair and i told you that how to create dictionary it's like set only but you'll have to give the key name then colon and then you can give the value key name colon and then you can give value you see this again this collection is not homogeneous it's heterogeneous some are using text some are using uh, integer some are using again the character right so this is a key value pair and how to know the keys and value there is two method there is two method that is keys and values am i clear till this point yes sir okay so what i'm doing i'm just uh, closing the session with one code in the dictionary and then again we are going to meet at 11 right so okay so to to this uh, dictionary only i'm implementing for loop for uh, let me write key in cards fine i'll discuss the indentation don't worry just i'm writing a code but i'll explain everything don't worry e Mm -hmm. Nothing that uh, these uh, students only know that Pakistan students, mm -hmm. not Pakistan, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some some background noise is there. Okay, so uh, this is basically implementation of uh, for loop for the dictionary for key in cars. Uh, the cars is dictionary, and what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find the keys that is there is three key volvo toyota and honda and uh, the values like the the values to that uh, key right so the key in cars that is the volvo toyota and honda and then finally the values to that uh, key what are the values to that key that is 10 20 and 30 so yeah this uh, I'll start from here only to the next session when I when I'll start uh, the next session at 11. The looping and finally we'll move to uh, to the next session. I'll start from this looping, then list comprehension, and then we'll move to the file handling and all. Fine. Or if time permits, I can. just cover one topic more that is called as list comprehension yeah list comprehension that is again going to be used too much in ml so let me create a list my list and i am putting some value like 14 50 34 45 and 76 so these are the value to my list my list equals right and then i am creating one blank list new list what i am doing this is a blank list what i am doing i am trying to fill the data from my list 
to the new list. So for that, what I'm doing, I'm just implementing a for loop for val in my list. And then new list dot append. What I'm doing, I'm appending with the val multiplied five. And then I'm printing my list. And then new list. You see what I'm doing? This loop val in my list. So my list, there is five values. One, two, three, four, five. So for the first time, this 14 will come to val. And what will happen? New list dot append val multiplied five. So 14 multiplied five will be the first element to this my list. Next, 50 will come to the val, multiplied 5, 250 will be the second element to this new list. Accordingly, it is going to, um, it is going to create five values and it is going to append to my list. And finally, you'll get a list from one list. So we created a list from an existing list with some logic. It can be anything, like it can be anything. Like logic can be anything, um, fine. So this we are calling it as list comprehension. And this is one of the very important uh, topic to uh, know while uh, doing your uh, ML uh, code. Fine. So from here only, I'm going to start next session. And there's a break of 15 minutes right now. So we are going to meet uh, once again at SAP at 11. And I'm going to take all your uh, questions in the next session. Is it okay? Okay, so we are, we are meeting at meeting SAP at 11. Okay. Okay, Priya. Preeti? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, participants. We are meeting SAP at 11 with the list comprehension as well. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you,
so welcome back welcome you all i guess i am audible yes sir okay so as discussed uh, let me start with the programming construct we can broadly classify the programming construct into three broad categories that statement that is sequence selection and looping sequence meaning when you, are, you when your code is going to run in a sequence like uh, if i am writing here if i am writing here uh, print a print let us say 10 then print 12.5 and then print true yeah so in any case it's not going to uh, just you see the bypass the sequence if i have given print 10 and the first and the second sequence is 12.5 and third is true so it is going to maintain the sequence right this is called the this is the uh, sequence coding now sometimes this is not at all required to maintain the sequence while execution sometimes they need some part to be selected and some part to be just discarded so this is called the sequence and uh, sometimes we are calling it as the conditional statement right so conditional statement which we are using in uh, like uh, it's not a new uh, term to all of you that uh, conditional statement we are using since long like in the c we used uh, if else switch case ternary operator nested if else right likewise here we can use a conditional statement uh, that that is uh, that are used to execute a block of code based on some condition so when i'm asking conditional statement when i'm asking conditional statement meaning i'm asking meaning um wait conditional statement conditional statement statements are used to execute a block that is a uh, lines of code based on some condition fine so the conditional statement which uh, like uh, i told you uh, in c and java you are using if if else uh, nested if else switch case ternary operator likewise here also we can use if if else yeah so directly what i am doing i am applying it uh, before discussing any syntax you are knowing the syntax so directly i am applying it let us suppose here i have declared a uh, a variable called nm that is name and i am putting value with a string it literal ram fine and this value uh, this just uh, see it once i am going to ask question so you will have to see it thoroughly now this one expression a plus b x is equal to a plus b y equals 5 here the condition sorry here the condition if x logically equal to y this is conditional statement and in python for to implement any conditional or loop you need to give this colon for the indentation this is very much uh, uh, required you see in c or java there is uh, to create a block there is opening curly braces and closing curly braces to create a block but uh, in python you can't create block with the opening curly braces and closing curly braces so if you want some lines to be responsible for some 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 state uh, some conditional uh, operator like for or if you need to give this colon and whenever you whenever you 
Hello. Whenever you're giving, whenever you're giving this colon, whenever you're giving this colon, so what is going to happen? It is going to create indent. You see, now when I'm not giving colon, you see what is happening. When I'm not giving colon, so it is going to start from here. So it's not going to create any blob. But when you are going, when we are putting some colon, so it is going to give the indent. You see, now it's not starting just below if it, it is taking some 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 space. And now you can create the blog for this if. Now you can create some blog for it. And this all block statement will be responsible for this if. So I'm writing here print. Welcome to the party. That is the name inside NM, and X is equal to Y, right? Now this line is only responsible for this if. Now we'll have to just uh, discard this indent for. So I am writing a backspace, and here again I am writing else. And colon because I need some statement to be responsible for this if. Again, indent will clear uh, create, and here I'm writing a statement for this if. That is print. Bad luck. X is not equal to Y. Right. So when I'm going to run this code, what do you think? What will be the answer? Anyone? What will be the answer if I'm going to run this code? You see, 3 plus 2 is 5, so the value of x is 5, and y is also 5. So I guess this is conditional statement. So selection, so either of these two, either if or else, one will run. So as both are equal, so this statement will run. It will write, welcome to the party RAM. X is equal to Y, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you see, welcome to the party RAM. X is equal to Y. Fine? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, likewise, uh, there is looping for loop we can use either for or while in python fine so let me yeah. hmm. so let me create a list i'm creating batch fdp and putting some name in this list like uh, Bharat. Rupaya. Priya. And like it's it's uh, it's the same as we are using it in uh, other programming language. I'm just declaring in a slicing i is equal to zero, i is equal to zero, and then for uh, students, this is a variable in list. What is going to be list name? BFDP. Again, we'll have to give a colon. I told you why to give colon, just to create indent. If you're not creating indent, 
so you're not creating any block for this uh, for loop right so you see the indentation is created and here i'm writing i equals i plus 1 and this is just for the index right there is no uh, logic behind this i and here i'm printing i it is uh, colon and the name that is its students right huh? oh this is extra i rather uh, i should write here colon and then there is comma yes you see there is no meaning of i here just uh, i want to give a serial number here that's why uh, i told you this list is uh, indexed so it will start from zero so if i am using directly so it can give me 0 1 2 3 but actually uh, we should give number start uh, we should start number from 1 so that's why i use i equal to 0 then i plus 1 before printing anything and this you see so for loop how it is working this is not the first case we seen since morning this is the second or third case we are seeing for variable in list so this list will enumerate the number of times uh, the items are there so you see 1 2 3 4 this this loop is going to run four times and every time a value will come from the list to this variable that is the student and for that it will run one time fine so first time priti then varad then gopaya and then priya right okay likewise uh, another way like i can use i in range there's a method range n and you can print the value of i this is very simple implementation of for loop and i guess you can understand this there is no problem at all fine and if you are not writing print i then what is happening you see what will happen i am simply writing i what is going to happen there is no output actually so to print the value inside inside a loop you need to write the print statement in normal situation you can print any value by just writing the variable name but inside loop or condition statement you will have to write the print statement i guess it's okay now while okay the all above uh loop which i implemented i it, it is hard coded you see everywhere i hard coded so this time what i am doing i am trying to take value from the input to take value from the input there is a, a pre defined method we are calling it as input input right and uh, uh, the parameter is whatsoever message you want to give at the time of input like how many times do you want to run the loop fine right? then here i am writing count equals 1 and like uh, the old uh, while implementation like uh, like the implementation of while in c and java not old so condition count is less than equals num colon for indentation and then print loop number is count count and count equals count plus right and then it is here i am printing i am out of loop okay so loop depends on the three things that is the initialization of the loop which is here condition of the loop how many times the loop is going to run and the increment or decrement fine right? and the statement which you want to uh, 
uh, execute in the loop, right? So there is three things: initialization, condition, increment, decrement, and the most important that is statement you want to run within the loop. Fine. Now, when I'm trying to run this code, it, this code is not going to run. It 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 is going to throw an error, right? Because you see, I'm trying to take value from the user with the with the function input, right? How many times do you want to execute this run? Fine. So when the user is going to give value through input method, the value will be by by default the value will be of the of the type of string. So we I I need to just type cast it. You see, let me run it. Let me run it. Then you'll understand. Now you see it is asking, give me the value. So I am asking, okay, I want to run this loop five times. Now you see after five, it's going to throw error. Why? Because the value taken through input will be string only so i need to type cast it i need to convert it so i need to write num equals i need to type cast this the value got through input to integer again i am just storing it to the num right so now there is no problem now when i am writing five now you see it's working perfectly Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Now after this, I can just uh, just uh, discuss a topic called. functions as you know it is reusable code it takes parameter not always if i'm writing here it takes parameter it, it doesn't mean that it always takes parameter right it may take parameter it may or may not return values so how to create function in python very easy to create Function in Python, you'll have to use a reservoir def. Then you can write any function name. Let let me write uh, any like 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 M U L T mul. And I'm writing, I'm giving two parameter, x and y. Then the colon, just to create a block. And here I'm writing return x. Multiply y, right? Just compile it and call it, right? Now call it print mult n comma twenty. These are the two parameters which I am trying to give to this mult function, and just run it. you see so this is very easy way to create function in python you'll have to apply your logic the syntax will be like this only you can give some parameter or you may not depends upon your logic what logic you are trying to apply depends upon your uh, algorithm which algorithm you are trying to implement but the syntax is uh, like this only any point till this point no sir no point no sir okay okay so let me discuss one thing that is file handling this is the very important topic to discuss before entering to the machine learning right and then i'll discuss numpy also no worries file handling in python
okay so what i am doing i am creating some file first before going into detail right so let me create a file so here i am writing amit kumar jahid m uh priya chanda priti b gopaya chanda bharat b right let let me create some more names right uh okay so sayed basa uh, this simply name i don't know what the actual spelling so if i am writing some wrong spelling don't take it uh, okay uh kartik kumar ram saran sorya sorya d samya d fine now what i'm doing i'm saving this file to desktop with a name is students dot txt right i set it okay i set it fine now what i supposed to do first of all i need to you see into this pan how i open you see here there is a folder type of structure just click it here you'll get this pan onto this pan you can upload a file to this google collab you can drag and drop you can give path or you can upload right so by default directory to this pan is content directory so i am uploading the file to this content directory how to upload right click click on upload to desktop so you need to go to the desktop and the file name is uh, the file name is the student right the student.txt you open it okay now you see file is uploaded here yeah no problem yes sir okay so if file is uploaded you can just create a reference variable like if and there is a method called open and you can give the file name uh what is the file name that is students.txt okay so you can give the file name students.txt without giving any path because i have uploaded the file in the default directory if you are changing the directory then you'll have to of course you'll have to give the name of the uh, uh, you'll have to specify path right so now we have not uh, changed the uh, directory so no issues i can give the uh, file name directly so when i am just uh, executing it yeah it's it's fine so all the data of the student.txt i got in the reference variable if fine so now i can i can do one thing i can create a variable like names and uh, i can uh, there is a there is a method read so reference variable is if so i can write if dot read right so all the data from from this reference variable is going to be you see all the data it's going to read and it's going to put in names fine and you can just print names i told you if there is only one no need to 
right print you see you'll got all the all the names from the print fine or you can you can write like this if you are printing uh, if you are just writing names it will print the, it, it is going to give you uh, uh, data like this but if you want to print in format you'll have to use print method now when you are yeah this is the data is stored in the file and you have taken from from hard disk to file and finally to the google collab and finally to one variable names there is many methods to this it like if you can write print f dot read you see what is going to happen at this time i am not trying to store in any of the variable directly i am trying uh, trying to read wait 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 a minute Uh, I'll tell you one more thing. Yeah, you see, the read and read line is not working right now. Why? Because when I when I uh, just uh, read this file, now the um, the control is at the end of at, at the end of the file. So from there it is not possible. From there it is not possible to read read uh, to read the file. So what I'm doing, I'm just opening this file once again or and then and then after opening this file i am trying to do the read line now you see the first name amit kumar came now you want two names now you see the control is at the second so when you are writing print f dot read line it will print you the second line you see second and third now when you are trying to put all print all so the base print f dot it it's going to print all so the method you see after this priya chanda there is preeti gopaya all name came here so the 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 way to just shift this all the way to shift this this all is there is a method called sick method there is method called uh, you see tell method now if i try if i'm trying to know what is the curse control position so i can i can do one thing i can write fo dot tell if i'm writing print f dot l i see so it is at the 131th character it is reading character by character means if this is your file which we stored so it is first character second character third character fourth character fifth character 6 7 8 9 so now the control is at 131 character fine now if you want to send the control back to the beginning of file so the method is the method is sick fine so i can i can i can ask that uh, f dot sick 0 comma 0 now you see it will go to the zeroth position and again when you are going to print this uh, this all record so you can write f dot read you see you got all records because earlier it was at the 131 but you sent post fully the control at the beginning of the file and from there you are trying to read from there you are trying to read again if you want to uh, know the uh, position so you you can do one thing again you can write print f dot c not tell tell is going to tell you the position right so you can you'll able to know what is the control position right now 
again it is 131 and you see if you are trying to read now it is not going to give you any output if i'm trying to print and i i want to read all the whole file you see you are at the end of the file right so what to do once again you'll have to send somewhere and then uh, again you can start am i clear till this point sir yes, sir no problem yes, sir. if you are having any problem can you let me know no class no no sir oh i yes, am asking class this is not a class fdp right okay so audience there is uh, no question okay so let me discuss uh, let me start another topic that is correlated only there is no different topic so that is modules in five right you see uh okay Anyone from your side uh, can say something about this modules? It's not a new term, I guess. You might have heard many a time. Anyone? It basically, reusable code which can be used as black box. You see, I told you that uh, function is a uh, function is also a reusable code, right? And here also I am saying module is a reusable code which can be used as a black box. So there is nothing new in modules. Basically, uh, module, if you remember the package in uh, Java, right? But what we are doing in the package, we are just uh, collecting some classes and function in a separate folder and as and when required, we are calling and we are executing it, right? So similar type of functions or classes, we are just making making one, one, one file and uh, we are importing it and we are using it. In, in C also, uh, the header file, do you remember header file that had, has included studio.h or pony.h or mad.h or all header files, fine. So what is header file? Header file is nothing, it is collection of functions. Right. As an end required, we are just including it and we are uh, calling the function. In Java package, we are just uh, importing it and uh, the classes and function we are using it. Like in like in uh, Python, the module is the same. This is reusable code which can be used as a black box. You see, there is some inbuilt modules are available in Python. There is some inbuilt module modules available in Python. So let me. There is sorry. There is some inbuilt inbuilt modules in Python. 